Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today we'd like to flesh out some things we've already looked at. If you recall when we were looking at our rotating frame we looked at omega cross r and that gave us the tangential velocity. In a like way we looked at omega, whoops, omega cross omega cross r and that gave us our centripetal acceleration. And being students at that time, you dutifully wrote them down and tried to get a basic idea of what was going on. But in the back of my mind, but in the back of my mind, I'm wondering where do we come up with this omega cross r for tangential velocity? Where does a cross product come from? Today, we're going to look at the cross product when used in this capacity and try to get a better intuitive feel of where it comes from. We first saw both of these, or really explored them a little bit more when we were looking at rotation of say some rigid body about an axis and we were worried about, or we were concerned with what was happening with point P and we found that the velocity of point P in our standing free or our, our standing still reference frame our lab reference frame was uh, omega cross R of P and let's also recall that these are all vectors in addition we saw that the acceleration was uh, omega cross the velocity of point P. Or another way to say that was uh, when we said that, that that's really omega cross omega cross r. Now let's take a step back and try to remember what were we really doing. We were really starting off with, uh, we'll uh, give ourselves some coordinate system here, and we we're really starting off with some vector. It's a position vector. We'll name it r. That was our position vector of point p and we want to know if we're looking at velocity at point p we want to know the derivative of r with respect to time. And in the same way when we looked at acceleration we're really trying to find out the derivative of the velocity with respect to time. Well let's pretend, let's pretend for a moment that I didn't give you this fancy equation. You didn't know omega cross r. And I wrote for you this graph. And I told you on this graph that um, this rigid body is rotating at some angular velocity, omega. And I want to know what is the change in the position as a function of time? What is the change in position as a function of time? dr dt. We're going to make it nice and big. We're going to redraw this vector and we're going to remember our rules. Our rules are that this uh, this body is rotating. It's just rotating. So in red we have the current position and we'll say uh, in, in teal I suppose we're going to give the position a split second later. All right we'll label this. Let's see if I can do this sideways. R plus delta R. What do we notice? Well, first we notice. Uh, let's let's in green. This is what we're after. We want to know this right here because this green is dr dt. Now, of course, in my diagram, I'm looking at some larger change that we can do a geometric evaluation of. But the derivative is taking is taking that change as a limit going to zero. Well, what are some things we know about this green vector right here? The first thing we know is that it's perpendicular to r. The second thing we know is that the further we can imagine that if we took a smaller r, say our r ended right here, half the distance, the length of the green vector would be half as much. And as a matter of fact, you see that the length of the green vector increases linearly as we move along r. So as our distance vector increases linearly, so does the change in the distance vector. So in other words, dr is proportional to r. Well, we can number these one, two, and then there's one more thing that we know. We know that if we were to spin this up here, we spin it with some omega. If we were to spin it just, a, if we were to spin it faster, we would see that, um, let's say in, uh, in yellow, we would see that the change 
in that same amount of time would get bigger. And as a matter of fact, we know that the change in a certain amount of time is due to the omega. In other words, if we cut the omega in half, let's let's do that. If we cut our angular velocity in half, we would end up instead with a change that would be half as much. And that should make pretty much sense. That that should make sense. Cutting that angular velocity in half would cut the change in the position vector in half, which means that um, dr is proportional to omega. And when I say proportional, I'm talking about a linear relationship. It's not an omega squared or an exponential or anything like that. Great, so let's put that into math. How do we find the vector perpendicular to r? We're going to say that that is k cross r. And we've done this before when we have uh, looked at the relationship between e theta is equal to, whoops, the unit vector e theta is equal to k cross er. It's just whatever is perpendicular to er. Sorry, there's really no no equal sign here. That's, that's not what we're doing here. dr is proportional to r, so we're going to have some sort of r in our final equation, and dr is proportional to uh, omega. We're going to have some sort of omega in our final equation. So if I wanted to look at my graph, find out what dr dt is equal to, I'd start off with um, my k cross r. And you know, I really should have made this a unit vector. So we could say um, r over uh, magnitude of r. And then I'd say, well, well hold on a second. This, I, I want to adjust this for being proportional to r. So let's take out that magnitude of r on the, on the denominator, and now we have something that's proportional to r. And then I'd say, well, hold on, I want to account for um, the omega. And how convenient is that? Um, omega, remember, is in the k direction. So let's, let's take out this k and use omega to adjust for the angular velocity. Now we have something that we've completely made sense of. But, but wait, there's more. There's, there's, this is us looking at a position. And we wanted to find the derivative of the position, remember? That's what we were after, the derivative of the position. But that r, it could have also indicated velocity. Velocity is a vector. We can imagine that there's some velocity going in this direction. We want to know the change in the velocity as a function of time. Well, that's our acceleration, right? And so we can go through the same exercise for our velocity. As a matter of fact, if we're just looking at this frame rotating, so it's not, you know, it's not moving in this direction and, and point P isn't like changing this way, we're only looking at some sort of rotation. Our analysis works for any vector. We can, uh, a lot of times what people will do is they'll call it q. If we want to find the change in q as a function of time, any vector in a rotating coordinate frame, that's going to be omega cross q. And in a rotating coordinate frame, we could have also used this for our i and j unit vectors. And of course, from here, we can also add all the neat little features like, well, what if what if R is changing in the stationary coordinate frame? Or uh, what if there's also translation uh, between the coordinate frames? There's all sorts of other things that we can add to it. But at its basis, if we're looking at the influence of a rotating coordinate frame, just that influence, and we want to find the derivative of some vector we use omega cross, whatever that vector is. Hope this gives you a more intuitive feel of where we get that omega cross, how it's used, and what it means.